All right, just as a reminder, this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on Facebook and for others to view in the future by participating in this event. And if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and pictures to appear. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Jeff Morris. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. Uh, I uh, came up with CareerUSA.org in 2012 after a visit to the White House and realizing that nobody else was doing what we were doing in the DFW area and I want to help those outside the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I also facilitate and lead the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. I've been doing that since 2007. I'm a me member of the practice interview team that's been meeting uh, and have been doing that since 2016. Uh, offering interviews to uh, anybody who wants to participate in that. For our LinkedIn Tuesdays, we have three speakers we rotate through, Locke, Terry, and Ruth. This week, Locke Alderson is uh, going to be with us talking about strategies to get job results. Uh, the workshop's designed to uh, assist everybody in what they're doing. And uh, Locke, I'll turn it over to you and let you uh, go for it. Okay. You're going to share your screen or am I sharing mine? You share yours. Okay. You have to release your screen. So I don't see your screen yet. There we go. Not yet. Well, we're working through the technical. This is always the problem, Jeff. What am I so, doing here? Have you, is your uh, PowerPoint already in presentation mode? Yes, it's in presentation mode. Okay, so you just want to select the, when you're in screen share, select the one that says PowerPoint presentation. Well, I'm trying to get you back on the screen, and it's not happening. Well, you don't need me back on the screen. Well, I need to get oh. back. Oh. Do alt tab to get back. Okay. What am I doing to share a screen? One of the options should say PowerPoint presentation. Well, I don't see that one, Jeff. If you're in PowerPoint, um, if you have your slide expanded, you have to stop sharing, maybe. Well, I never did get to share. Uh, are you hovering down at the bottom? Do you see where it says participants in chat? Okay, here's share screen. There we go. There you go. Okay. My name is Locke Alderson. I'm not a technical genius like Jeff. I appreciate his support. And we'll go from there. And I'll try and get back to just me in the upper hand. Upper. Lock, don't, worry, don't worry about trying to get you in the upper corner. We okay. see you. Okay, well, you can see me and that's fine. I am a retired recruiter. I spent 41 years in industry and recruiting and HR and uh, also spent 19 years in career counseling and consulting. Some of that's overlapped. The last six years I was with Mullen International. They were bought by Lee Heck Harrison 
After that, I joined Lee Hick Harrison after I was laid off. We want to talk about LinkedIn today and why LinkedIn. It was originally started as a networking tool and as recruiters quickly adapted it as a recruiting tool simply because there are now 500 million people on LinkedIn worldwide, over 150 million people in the United States. And it's, it's a source, it's the number one source recruiters and hiring managers use to find and vet people. By vet, I mean they check them out. Well, basically, this is, my, this is my profile, and it all starts with your profile. And that's basically what LinkedIn calls a resume. As you can notice on the top of things, there's a number of things that you see right there. You can see a picture of me, my headshot, and you can see a background photo. You can also notice my name. If you're going to put your name on there, use the name that you would normally like to be called by. It makes it easier for the person that's on the other end of a conversation to get in touch with you that way. Notice below that there's a headline. And mine has career consultant, recruiting consultant. There, you have a choice of about five or six different ones, and you have 120 characters to play with. Below that, you'll notice the contact information, which is kind of important. You need to have that set up. And likewise, you need career opportunities or open to job opportunities. And you can set that up by going to your settings page, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. How do you increase your, if LinkedIn is your profile, the number one thing that you want to do is to get your profile rated to the top so it moves up. But one of the things you need to do is have a complete uh, profile so that you attain all-star status. Part of that is having a professional headshot. Your headshot is, should, doesn't have to be a, a professional one by a photographer, but if you're going to do a selfie, make it one that looks good. There's no glaring lights on it behind you. And have a, if you do a selfie, do a, a solid background that makes it easy to read. The next thing on there is your headline. Generally, it's going to be the title of the positions that you're looking for, that you're applying for. And you can have multiple ones up there. As I said, there's 120 characters that you get to play with. If you don't insert a headline, it's going to default to the last headline or the job title from your last position. You need to also click that you're open to, to job opportunities. That's over in your set settings section, and we'll show you how to do that again, as I said, in just a minute. The about section used to be the summary section. This kind of gives an overview of your career. You have about a thousand characters that you get to play with in that situation. And you need to have your contact in the first couple of lines in your about section, even if you've opened up your contact information and have that there. Unless I'm a first degree connection with you, I may not be able to see your contact information. And you want to make it as easy as possible for the recruiter or hiring manager to get in touch with you. So you can have your contact information in multiple places. I strongly suggest that it's in the top section, top part of your about section or your summary, the first two lines. Because when your summary shows up or your about section shows up on the profile, it only shows the first two or three lines. Your experience section and the job should have the job titles that you have gone by or you've used and the description of your duties and keywords should include keywords from your profession. If you have an unusual job title, like member of design staff three, and that's not a title that's easily understood by some recruiters and others in industry or others in, on LinkedIn, give the title that you actually use or is used in industry in the parenthesis. You want to also have your education awards and certification and professional development. Again, a lot of the times when I view uh, people's profiles, they just talk about their education, basically the degree that they have. They do, seem to lack and forget to put on their professional development. And how have you kept current in your field is an important thing. You also need to include your skills from your profession and the endorsements. Once you've listed that, you can go to your skills and we'll show you how to do that as well. And recommendations are like letters of rec are like letters of reference. I have 25 on mine. People have been kind enough to give me recommendations. But it makes it easy for the recruiter or hiring managers to see what others think about you, particularly your core workers and former managers. This just happens to be a picture of my headline or my dashboard, which is another section of that. You notice the number of people who viewed my profile. What you want to do if you're looking for a job is to get that number up. The number of posts that are there. And we'll show you, some people have looked at the posts here. I know I'm speaking a little bit later this afternoon. And about 900 people looked at the posting that I did for that particular. And how many times have you shown up in a search appearance? Another section that's there is the the uh, featured section where you can post things like uh, presentations that you've done, articles that you've written, interests that you've had. 
When you click on the search appearances on the, on the uh, dashboard, this is what shows up. These are the keywords that recruiters might have used to find you or why you've shown up there. It's nice to know what they're looking for so that you can include some of those words in your headline and in the text of your, of your profile. It'd be also nice if you click on the searchers where those people have worked, you can notice that these are companies that have looked for people with a recruiter title. They may not have a current opening, but there are companies that have the kinds of work that you're looking for if they use these terms. Here's some sample headlines. The top two retired and unemployed are not too, not too successful in conveying what you're looking for. They tell something about you, but not, so, not necessarily what you're looking for. Formally VP of Finance also conveys what you're looking for, but it also lists the word formally. If you don't have to include a negative, I would omit formally in part of your, your headline. Here's another one. Experienced media professional gives a little bit more meaning to what a media professional is looking for. But here's a better one. A strategist and content manager who's seeking new opportunity has experience in print and digital media, public relations, marketing, and corporate communications. Here's another one. This one is pretty succinct, but it also tells who the, what the individual is looking for. Something in supply chain, procurement, and purchasing, or an accounting position, general ledger and financial reporting, or cost accounting, or some of the other ways that you can modify that. An executive assistant. Well, that tells something, but adding budgeting and event planning gives a little bit more meat on the bones. An IT project manager with IDLE certification, and who's a scrum master. Recruiters know what those things are if they're looking for somebody like that. General manager uh, in aerospace and manufacturing. Again, pretty succinct description of what this individual is looking for. Okay. Others could be web developer or, or web uh, strategic planning, program management, budgets, or some other kinds of titles as a sample. And if you should want a copy of the presentation, you'll send me an email at the end of the presentation. We'll show my email address and request it that we, we saw it on Career DFW Live today. Here's a sample summary. Notice that the top of the summary is the email address. That's where it's visible, makes it easy for somebody to get hold of it. It's a pretty good description of a senior financial, uh, senior finance manager and operations leader, somebody who has a background in financial planning and analysis. Most of the time when you use, it, use an acronym like FPNA, you need to spell it out at least the first time that you use it, although FPNA or CPA, MBA are terms that are searchable. Here's some other samples. And when you're writing your summary, uh, you can use first person, unlike a resume which discourages use of first person. But you notice how they've written it, just some different examples of giving information about you. And that summary section has about a thousand characters that you get to play with. Skills and endorsements is the next area. It's further down on the profile toward the bottom, but completing this section and you have a chance to include up to 50 different skills, and you notice it's there. If it has a plus by it, you can click on journalism and it will add that. If you, have, if you want to add something else, other, you can try and type that in. If it's recognized as one of the titles that LinkedIn uses, it will accept that. And you can arrange the titles that you have. Oh, what did I do, Jeff? Okay. They're still okay. Okay. You can list three, three titles. Three skills are listed by you, and people can endorse you for those skills. You notice this career counseling I had from 99 people had recommended me. Two of those were former co-workers at Mullen. And here on executive search, four people at, at, Mullen, at uh, Mullen had recommended me in recruiting. But you can see the show more will allow you to see those, and you can search. You can adjust which ones you want to be seen by. Next thing you want to ask about is, is your, public profile, is your public profile really public? Well, you can go to the settings and privacy area and adjust these different areas. One of the ones is the job seeking preference, but you want to go in and take a look at all of those. When you're on your profile and you've clicked on me, your profile here, it will show up, edit your public profile. And when you do that, you want to adjust who you are. 
it usually comes out when they give, when you signed up for LinkedIn, it'll have your name, usually hyphenated, and some numbers and letters after that. You want to take those numbers and letters off of there and do a little bit of advertising. We'll do a little bit of talking about you. Gail, this is from Gail Houston. And when she clicks on that and saves it, it will show a green check that it's okay. If it gives you a red X, it means somebody else has got that, that name. Now, Gail Houston, there are four different Gail Houstons in the country. Gail has shared with us. You can do it that way. A customized URL, which you're trying to do there is, is something else you're going to use. You can copy that customized URL and put it on your resume. And if it's an online resume, that means by clicking on that, it's a hot link to your LinkedIn profile and people can actually take a look at it that way. You can also include that on your business card. Okay. How do you go about setting the privacy setting? Well, a couple that you want to do is who can see your email address and who can see your connections and also viewed. Again, that tells people that, you know, that they've also viewed that. But again, by changing who can see your email address, that means it's easy for people to see you, even your second and third degree connections. Otherwise, if you're, you and I are just a first degree connection, that's the only way I can get in touch with you unless you're open to connecting okay, and seeing the connections that are there. The other important thing that I mentioned is let recruiters know what you're, what you're looking for in the settings section. You see this when you first sign on and change this, it allows you to enter up to five different job titles. After that, when you edit your profile online, you don't have to go to the settings. You can do it there on your profile, on your homepage for your profile. The pipe character that's shown in, in mine right here, actually that's a shift character on the upper right hand side of your keyboard. If you're gonna use the pipe character or a backslash, you'd wanna make sure that there's a space on either side of it because if not, those words will not be searchable. You can also use a comma with a space after that to make it a searchable term. When you're on the settings for your, for your job opportunities, you notice as see additional details, see all details. You can also add the locations that you're interested in. If you're interested in the local area like Dallas or Frisco or uh, the colony or Fort Worth, you can do that. If you're interested in the United States, you can also alert the recruiter that way. Because when they click on that job opportunities, they can see the rest of the information. You can open up to all LinkedIn members or ju just have that to recruiters. Well, take a look at your profile again one more time. The title that's here, these are, these are some titles and you have 120 characters there to play with. The job preferences is initially, as I said, in your settings. After that, you can click the blue pencil and edit that. It's right there. You want to have your contact information. If you're looking for a job, you want to have that contact information in the first two lines of your summary section. If you, even if you want privacy, you don't have to do it that way as well. You also want to have a current position listed on your LinkedIn profile. And why would you want to do that? Because this is one of the areas that LinkedIn gives credit for. If you have a current position, because many times you'll put that you ended your employment at a certain company on a given date, it detracts from the number of points. So you can add that. This is, happens to be for a, a telecommunications project manager or program manager. And while this is out of date, uh, I haven't figured yet out how to update this particular screen. But notice that it has a current position title, has a location, what their company is looking for a position in that. And it gives you the opportunity to have a headline and a description of your skills as well. You can create job alerts. Once you've done a search for jobs, you can click on that and turn that on that you want to look for by changing the radio button there, and it will create alerts and send them to you daily or weekly, depending upon the frequencies that you select. It's nice to know how LinkedIn sorts recruiter searches, and actually there is a, a package that LinkedIn sells to recruiters, a recruiter light for, for for $100 a month or a recruiter, full recruiter package is $500 a month. Recruiters use those tools to be able to find out, have more connections than you and I might have. LinkedIn gives every profile a score based on the completion of the profile and how they use LinkedIn. And values are for each section. And you want your desires to have high scores, so you move to the top of the recruiter's list. All-star status, we've talked about that briefly. An exact match of the job title in the current, previous, and positions at the headline that the recruiter is looking for a hiring manager. That you're open to new opportunities. Recruiters like low-hanging fruit. 
Well, they'll contact those people who are interested because recruiters, like anybody else, doesn't like to be told no. You want to have keywords from your profession. What are you looking for? What are your strengths? Those are some of the things that you can include in your profile, along with your connections. And having over 500 connections gives you, I think, is the max that you need is the threshold you need to cross. Uh, that will score the highest point for that value. And your skills, we've talked briefly about that, how you enter those. You have a chance to enter up to 50, and recruiters will search on those. And then your geographic locations. Typically, recruiters are going to look for people that are within 25 miles of their job location, simply because candidates have told recruiters, I don't want to drive more than 25 miles to work. The exception to that is if you're willing to commute greater distance, or you're willing to relocate, or you're willing to travel. I know I've had candidates that lived in Denton who are willing to work in Dallas or Fort Worth, and that's more than 25 miles, which is the default setting on most of the job postings. And when you look at jobs, you notice that there's a setting of how far you'd like to travel. You comment on posts and articles or write a blog. Uh, these are also give you additional points on, on your uh, LinkedIn profile. So what do recruiters really look for? They look at the headline, job title or titles. Here they look at your employment. They look for keywords and skills, the industries that you've worked in, your education and location, and current employment. Then they get down and look at your current and prior employers and the length of service. They look at your pedigree, in other words. So this is what a recruiter actually sees when they do a search. If you'll notice that this particular one was for a product manager in the Seattle area, they were willing to consider somebody from the San Francisco area. The skills that they were listed were product management, product marketing, and there were about 6,900 people that applied for this position. You can also follow companies. That's another area that you get point for on the profile. Let's take a look at another search. This one was for a project manager in the Chicago area. About 43,000 people came up in the search, but only, 40, but only 83 of those were open to new opportunities. And you notice some of the keywords that were used in the search criteria, business strategy, analytics. Each of those were there and they were looking for somebody from Chicago. Northwestern University is pretty good at something like that. Some of the other schools in Chicago might be the University of Chicago, at, uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. There's another one that's up in that part of the country. Well, let's get down to looking for a job because I think that's another thing that most of you are interested in. When you open up and you click on the jobs tab up here, you have two, two items in your search boxes, the search for, for jobs. Enter that title and you enter a location. If you don't enter a location, it will default to the United States when you do your search and you'll have to do that. Okay, one of the things that you can do with LinkedIn, one of the jobs that you get is you can filter them. One of the things that I strongly recommend in terms of the filters that you use is looking for jobs that are fairly fresh. So change the anytime to the past week. The reason being is that the first response to a posting on the internet, whether that's on LinkedIn or Monster or any of the job boards, is usually within about three minutes. And it can be as many as three or 400 that have responded in the first hour. The other factors that you can see, you can look for the job type. Most of the jobs that you see are going to be full-time positions, but you notice some other categories there as well. For interns and part-time contracts and temporary and volunteer opportunities. You can choose a location, okay? If you're not willing to drive as far as Fort Worth or Arlington, you can limit it to Plano or to Dallas. And again, you can look for specific companies and you can look at different industries and job functions because even for a recruiter, sometimes a recruiter is a recruiting manager Sometimes it's in business development or sales, and sometimes they specialize in a given area like information technology. Another filter that you can use is the filter for the experience level. This is one way that you can help to determine a little bit of what the salary level is appropriate for a job. In this particular case, an internship is just what it sounds like. Typically somebody who's in school, like between semester or between years in their MBA program, like at SMU, or somebody who's an H-1B student, they can have up to three six-month internships to gain practical experience. Entry level is generally right what it says. Running out of school or the basic level of position. Associate is usually about one to five years experience. Mid-senior level is anywhere from about four to 15 years experience. And director and executive tend to be management positions. 
but you can check on as many of those as you want. There's an all filters over there and over there that doesn't show on this thing, you can click a clear button, but you can go back to your original search that you, that you started with without having to re-enter the search terms. You can create job alerts. There's a tab right there that you can do that and create by clicking this to the right and alert you in any job for a global talent or a talent acquisition specialist. It has talent acquisition in the job title. It will show up and they'll send you an email on something like that. You can also search optimize your LinkedIn by looking at people. Back to that screen. Okay. You might ask, why would you want to look at people on profile? Well, if a recruiter search doesn't, or when you search for yourself on LinkedIn, again, if you don't show up on, like on this one, for a recruiter in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, there were about 26,000 when I did this search. Subsequent searches, that's grown to about 37,000 recruiters in the, have recruiter in their profile in Dallas. And again, I used to show up in the first couple of screens there. That's, there's 10 of these on each screen, 10 for thumbnail sketches, and you want to show up in the first 10. Uh, otherwise, you probably are not going to get looked at as from LinkedIn. But what do you do with that? You can optimize it by looking at people's profiles. Say, take a look at some of their profiles and see some of the verbiage that they have in their profile. If it fits you, take that, insert it in your profile at the pro appropriate place. You can do a company search. Search for people at a company by going by company and then searching for somebody at Thomson Reuters. And as it sees here, there were about 227,000 people at one point or another had Thomson Reuters in their profile. And it looks through that and you can do some refinement. You can also do a people search using a company search to do a people search. Okay, this was the Thompson Reuters as I started to do that search. You can list some of those. There's Thompson Reuters as I started to enter the information that way. And you can look at people. When you've done that, and use a company search to find people. The first screen that you typically come up with was there's the Dallas area where 3,700 people are following a company. And again, that's one of those little things. LinkedIn tracks has points to your score on the profile and the algorithm. Where they live, you can see where those people live. In the United States, you can see where they studied and where they went to school. The next screen, if you click on that, it allows you to take a look at what they do, where they work, what department, okay? And what they studied in school is another one that you can look at. Gives you all kinds of information that you can use to exchange information or it gives you a little bit of background before you contact the people and extend an invitation to join you. I had a friend, Dirk Spencer, and that's his picture up there, who just changed his title and his summary section, which is now the about section. He updated it from a recruiter, technical recruiter, to IT recruiter available immediately at corporate and contract. Again, it was short and brief. For those people who are looking for a recruiter, this tends to draw their attention. You don't have to have a lot of information on your profile. You just have to have the right information. He changed his summary, as it says there, to IT recruiter available immediately, corporate or contract. Those are the kind of things. Jeff, I'd like to turn it back over to you. As I said, those that are interested in the presentation, if you'll send me an email to lockalderson at gmail.com, and mentioned that you saw it on Career DFW today, Career DFW live today. I'll be happy to send you the whole presentation. Locke, thank you very much. Uh, do you want to? Do we want to do a few LinkedIn uh, profiles? Look at a few profiles. Look at a few profiles. If I can draw that up, okay. I'm on. Can you see the LinkedIn profile on my screen? No, we only see your PowerPoint. No, I'm sorry yes. about that. Yeah, you have to share the. Got there you go. Okay. We can get a name. We can take a look at some profiles. So somebody, if we, you want us to look at your profile, just pop your name in the chat box or put it in the comment box on Facebook and we will look you up. Any volunteers? Let's see. I hear somebody typing. All right. Luis Garcia. Uh, it's L U I S. All right, Lewis. Yeah. Yes. Right there. This is the top one there. 
Okay. Here we go. This has got a good headshot and nice suit and tie, coat and tie that he's looking with there. Come on, Lewis. All right, done. Just click on the X in the uh, right upper right, not the very top X, the white one. Yeah. Okay. Got a good background. He shales the information. Let's do this on his contact information. He's made it easy for me to connect with him. And if you do connect on LinkedIn, you want to personalize the note a little bit. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to say send now. If you want to saw you on LinkedIn, would like a presentation to have you join my professional network. So I've just sent him an invitation right now. Okay. I'm going to go back to his profile and then let's take a look at his contact information since we're not connected. See what I can see on his contact information. Okay, all that's on LinkedIn is his LinkedIn URL. He has customized it, taken the, the numbers after it. He might add something else about it from that. Okay. He has a good open to job opportunities. You notice he's got five of them there. We can see the details, which will show the locations, I think. Yeah, Dallas Fort Worth, he's looking for full time work. Okay. okay. He's got his he's got his phone number there. Makes it real easy in the about section to get hold of people. And yeah, notice that this is in the first couple lines. What you're looking to do is to have people to click the see more button and talk about your summary that's there. Okay. I might mix this up a little bit with some bullets. Again, because we're used to reading text, bullets tends to highlight things or maybe using bold. You can copy and paste into your LinkedIn profile when you do that using the blue pencil that's out to the side. Okay, got some highlights. You can have career skills and you can skills in more places. He's got his resume link there as well, and his so, experience. Do you think people should post their resume on LinkedIn? It's variable. I like to be able to customize resume because if you're posting your resume, it's cast in concrete. You can't customize it to the particular job you might be applying for. So yeah. that's one of the advantages also on LinkedIn when you find jobs or was it use an easy apply. If you do use easy apply, it's typically going to send your profile that's there, which may not be customized to the job. Again, by having you, some of those when you do the easy apply allows you to also upload a resume at the same time. Any questions, Luis? Um, yes, th thank you for viewing my profile. One question I did have, <clears throat> do I have too much information under each of my job titles? Because um, I've, I've noticed- you've broken, you've broken it up. What you can do on this area right here where it says managed, you can align that so you can go in and do the settings there and so that they line up perfectly. Again, you typically don't want to have more than four or five bullets under each position. You can break it up and put some of it as, as narrative as well. So manage, manage contact center with related logistics systems. And then what were some of the highlights? This is the 90% is a highlight that you ever accomplished. So breaking up narrative and, and bullets is a way to make it a little easier to read and follow. That's what you're trying to do. So in your background, I would say contact center, probably or call center. Um, some of the things that you might be interested in, sales development, concierge services. Okay. Any other questions, Luis? Uh, no, no other questions. Thank okay. you. Someone else about their profile. Okay, off of uh, Facebook here, let's look at first person to type their name in with Suzanne, S U Z A N N E, Reed. Oops. Nope. Uh, and it's R E E D. And I'm going to guess it's the first person there. That's you, Suzanne? Well, you got to remember, Facebook's on about a 30-second delay, so we'll That's find cool. out here in just a second. So <laughs> We got a lead back. Okay, looking at her profile, she's got an easy way to get hold of her is to connect. I'll go ahead and do that, and we're doing. Hopefully, this is the right Suzanne. I'll personalize this one. Yes, that is the correct one. So you're good to go. I could type, I'd be dangerous, Jeff. <laughs> well, you only need two fingers, but they gave us 10 to play with. They gave us the other eight to make mistakes with. And, and
and I would recommend just while you're typing, I would just let everybody know, always send a personal note whenever you want to connect with somebody. Let them know either why you should connect, how you met the person, something, because, uh, you know, I get connection requests all the time. I have no idea why we should connect. You know, if you saw me because of what we're presenting here, that's great. But, uh, you know, always, always send that personal email because it just, it makes, I will automatically connect with you if you send that personal note. That's the kind of note that you want to have. I've just sent it to her, but let's take a look at her profile. Suzanne, has, because of her second degree connections, I, she has her email address. So that's opened up. That's a good thing that she's got. Okay. Can you show where to update your contact information? I'm sorry? Can you show where to update your contact information? Uh, yes, I will. Okay. We'll do that as soon as we get done looking at this profile. Well, this one, let's go back to that. She's, she's indicated some of the positions that she have. A personnel, a personal assistant, you might have personnel assistant if you've had personnel, Suzanne. If that's a good thing. She's got C details. She's looking for something full-time. She doesn't indicate where she's looking for. She just has a Dallas Forward Metroplex. If she's anywhere in the Dallas Forward Metroplex, that's fine. She's looking for Frisco or Plano. I would put that as well. It makes it easy for the recruiter. She's done some things about about her about section. She doesn't have very much information there. But let's see what she's got. Good core competencies. I would move again your contact information to the top of the screen. Make it easy so they don't have to do that many clicks. And the greater the clicks, she's used a background on here. Which is good. It looks like that's from Wordle. That's it. And seeking opportunity. She's got a current position listed. Okay, looks like a good profile. Okay, she's got that she's a notary public, which is another thing for executive assistants. And she's got her volunteer experience as well. Okay, if she doesn't have any questions, let's go and what we're going to look at my profile, right, Jeff? Okay, can we show people how to edit the contact information? Okay. So I've gone to my profile, clicked on me, and I clicked on view profile. And to do the contact information, I'm going to click on that. And that's where you do it. You can add anything that you want there by clicking on the blue pencil. Oh, thank you. That's simple. It's real simple. Yeah, when you're on your when you're on your profile, anytime you see one of those blue pencils off to the uh, right hand side, yeah. that means you can edit that particular section. Right there. That's how you go about doing that. Somebody else? All right, let's go back to a uh, Zoom. How about uh, David Ashley Blaker, D-A-V-I-D. I know David. David Ashley, here you go, right there. We are already linked, so I'll look at his, okay. He's got an interesting background, because he's, he's, he's trying to do that. So it's a grabber of a, of a background photo. It's not actually a photo, it's a diagram with, like, with some text attached to it. We are first degree connections. You've got corporate communication, public relations. You shortchanged yourself, David, that you can do. Okay. Shortchange yourself, you've got more information. You've got 120 characters to play with and you've used about 60, maybe 45 or 55 to 60 pieces of information. So other okay. that you can add there. He's used the pipe character with a, with a blank space on either side as well. He's opened opportunities. He's listed some jobs here. And he's interested in the titles of the jobs as opposed to just the functional area of the title. Okay. And he's got some information. He's got some communications there that he's written or areas of interest. And he asks, there's a grabber there, none of the above. If your response is anonymous, so go that way. We've got some groups that we're a part of. I didn't mention groups. When you're on LinkedIn, you can join up to about 50 groups. And recruiters do post jobs in groups, even though, and those jobs that are posted in groups may not be on LinkedIn proper. So again, there's a job, source of jobs that you may not have thought of is within groups. Again, in his about section, I would also include it in your about section, David, having your contact information at the top. Let's see if it's at the bottom. Nope. 
If we weren't first degree connections, I would not be able to get in touch with him. You've got an information, you don't have your phone number there. If you want him to call you, you need to put your phone number. It's okay to just have your email address, which is what I do. I don't have my phone number in mind. That's by design. Okay. Again, I would, I would clean up some of the spacing on this so that the bullets line up, it makes it easier to read. And by having this number of bullets, you're asking me to make a choice as to which one I might want to read. Again, I would start any of these kind of bulleted items with an active verb, it makes it that way. Here's David, his email address. Again, I would put that at the top of the about section. Easy for them to get in touch. Uh, tell, tell us again how you clean up the bullets in there. Okay, you can do that by taking copy, copy that, take it out to Word, and clean it up and adjust it that way. Okay. And then paste it back in. Takes a little bit of doing, but again, I think it's a lot easier to read. If you take a look at my profile, you can notice some of the different ways I tried to do that. I didn't use, you can't insert bullets, I don't think, in LinkedIn. Uh, I used dashes on mine because it did the editing in LinkedIn. But you can add bullets when you take it out to Word and create it that way. Okay. Got a good number of his followers, his activity. Again, you don't talk very much about what you did with AT&T, but that's a long time ago. Again, you haven't given much information about Fleischman Hillard, San Antonio and Dallas. Again, what were some of the results that you achieved there? Okay, a quick question. I saw, um, so you can see that, that I'm not currently employed. I saw somebody's profile today where they created a current employment doc uh, or funny. listing with a title. Yeah, you can do that. You take a look at the one that's in the slide deck. If you okay. Want. It, that's why what, what do you list as employer? Your phone number. Okay. You can list looking for an opportunity in telecommunications or public relations or okay. communications. Take a look at the sample and play with that one. Okay. Suggest that. Looks good other than that. He's got his skills listed. Again, you can choose the different skills, reputation management. If that's something that means a lot in your field, that's great. As a rec former recruiter, I wouldn't quite know what that meant. Okay. okay. Media relations, strategic I, I would probably have public relations of what I would choose as more one because those are the ones that your recruiters are looking for. Remember the people reading your profile may not be proficient in your profession. Okay, let's try somebody else. Okay, on Facebook, we have somebody, Gitta, G-I-T-A, and last name is G-U-R-U-N-G. -G. Here you okay. go. Okay, she doesn't have a background photo. That's, that's no problem with that, but it just adds something to that of what she's looking for. She's got a degree in accounting. She's originally from Connecticut. So are, is Gita here? Or in the but she's on Facebook, so I don't know where she's watching from. Gita, I guess if you can tell us where you're watching from, that'd be great. I'm just gonna accept her invitation. She sent me an invitation. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and accept that. Oh yeah, it says there I watched your uh live presentation, so. I'll come back and I will send her the slide deck. Come on. Okay. Okay, her contact information sets her second degree connections. She's got an email address where she can be reachable. She doesn't have a phone number, which is okay. But again, I would have the phone number in the about section. Go, go back to the contact information for just a second, if you will. I just want to point out this is the first for her profile. You want to edit, get a, you want to edit your Nathan URL Hillard. profile to get rid of those numbers and stuff. And uh, Gita Gurung dash accountant. You might put in the word accountant. And there is kind of a little bit of advertising. They let you do that with a profile. And you can take that and you can paste that in your resume. If it's in your online resume, as I said, it's a hot link to your LinkedIn profile. You can put it in your as I just did, okay, we got her there. But she could do that as well on our, on our contacts. Also, while you're on that screen, let's just point out, or let's, uh, you can, I'm done there, if you close out of that. If you notice on the right-hand side of her, 
thing, it says people also viewed. We didn't talk about that today. That's another setting that you can have for a registered nurse, uh, hospital access. It's possible that she's been looking in, for a job in that area, okay, but possibly not, okay? So that's where, over here under job opportunities, when you're on your screen, Gita, you can use the blue pencil and add other opportunities. So what kind of accounting? Cost accounting, general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, or some different area, manufacturing accounting. Those are some of different areas, bookkeeping, budgeting, fine, you know, budgeting, financial planning, or some other areas. You've got a hundred, you've got some other job opportunities that you can put there, up to five. Up here, you don't have a headline. You just have that you'd have your degree in accounting, which defaults from somewhere. You, that's what you use as your headline. So if you've just gotten your degree in accounting, that's fine. But maybe there were some areas that you specialized in for your accounting degree there in Connecticut. Okay. You've had some experience with payroll. You can include that as well if you are interested in payroll. If you're not interested in it, I wouldn't include it. Okay. But she actually she's had some experience while she was finishing up a degree. Okay. That's the information on that. Get in unless she has some questions. Somebody else. Yeah, thank you. All right. She is, uh, by the way, she is in uh, Connecticut. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Who do we have? Uh, the next person up on Zoom was for uh, Tony. B I E N. There you go. Uh, T O N Y. Okay. And there you go, that very first one right there. This Tony? The yes. answer? Yes. We're already connected. Again, senior consultant airlines at American Express. So, airlines you might include in your head, he has business travel. You might have travel and hospitality since. American Express also does other things other than just airline reservations. They do hospitality like hotel and car reservations, although car companies are not doing too well right now, or rental companies. Again, we're connected. Take a look at his contact information. He has that open. Again, you may not want, you don't have to put your street address there, just the city that you're in. Some people don't want to be stalked. I know a lot of the people in profiles from California just put in their, their city that they're located in. You do want to put in a city and a zip code because that's one of the criteria that recruiters use to find you. Okay, and when they do a search for somebody with a background like you as a consultant, okay, what they will do is do a search for 25 miles within their radius. With a greater chance of follow showing up in their searches is that way. Again, he's used the word senior consultant. That's fine. You may want to shorten that, and add something else to the profile. Again, one of the things I want to look at. Okay, he's got his contact information, but it's at the bottom of his, his profile, I mean, his uh, about section. Again, I suggest, maybe we get to the top. He's used first person, which is fine, okay? There's some other things to break up. He's used numbers as opposed to bullets. Again, different approach, different works fine. He's apparently either, he's written an article for Toastmasters, which is something of interest in people, okay? His activities, things that he's commented on. Senior consultants for the airline. Again, if there's a different title, Tony, that you've used, explain it in parentheses after it. Senior consultant can mean a lot of things to a different people. I know I work for Siebel and for Oracle, and I look for consultants who can install the software. But there are different types of consultants. They're business consultants, financial consultants. The Fenway Group was a consultant. It looks like he's done some accounting work in the airlines, airline and financial industries. He was an American in international sales as well. Okay, the history there. Other questions that Tony might have. Uh, we, 
Yeah, Tony, thank you for putting in that uh, profile. Uh, we had a couple questions we're going to answer before we sort of wrap up here. One question was, is it limiting to be open only to recruiters? Uh, well, recruiters are going to be the ones to see that. If you want your network to help you uh, with job opportunities, if you put that you're open to job opportunities and you want your network to be able to help as well, that's a good way is to put it to open to all of LinkedIn. If you're just interested in recruiters, generally that was done when people are, were still working and looking to change opportunities and they only wanted recruiters to see it. That's why they clicked that and that's why that was inserted. And I think you also just, and one other thing, there are probably recruiters at some companies that don't pay for, the company won't pay for the recruiting package. So if you are open for a new opportunity, I would let everybody know uh, it would just be worth doing. Uh, another question here is, I've read that you should not attach a resume as a document to your LinkedIn profile. Is that true? We talked about that briefly. The reason you don't want to attach a resume is because it's not customized. What if somebody's looking for, they open up your resume and they say, oh, you're a customer relationship specialist and you were doing a customer relationship at another company, but they're looking for a customer service rep. It may not click in their head that, oh wait, that's the same title. So you want to customize every resume you send out. So don't post your resume on LinkedIn. Well, that, that would be my advice. But if you do post your resume, you want to have a broad title as you can on that. It's a more generic type resume. Right. Typically, uh, typically another, com right. another comment here off of uh, Facebook. Uh, let's see here. Just a note, in other webinars, leaders have advised us to put the contact phone number towards the bottom of the About Us section as a call to action. Uh, I agree with you. Putting it at the top is forcing, whoops, I didn't get to see, is forcing those interest to see on, to click on more to be able to see more information about you. As a uh, suggestion for that one, Jeff, so I put it at the top and at the bottom, reach out to me or contact me and put your phone number again. The right. more places that it is, the easier it is to get in touch with you. After they've read the, your about section, they may not want to scroll back up to contact with you. But if it's in both places, it makes it really easy for them to click on it, it's an email, or if it's, if it's a phone number to pick up the phone and call you. Remember, all this formatting and you know, what Locke talks about and what Terry will talk about next week and what Ruth talks about in a couple, who talked last week and be talking in a couple weeks, everybody has their own opinion. This is a lot like resumes. I think more people are sort of consistent with what they're doing here on LinkedIn, but you know, just like a resume, you ask 10 different people their opinions, you're gonna get 10 different answers. So just as a, uh, uh, you just awesome. note that everybody's offering their advice, pick and choose what you like, and uh, that will, you know, I think that would really, really help everybody. As a, for instance, on Tony's profile, his headline is senior consultant. If you look down at his, his, his profile further down on the experience section, he's done other things. Some of those other things can be up there. With he's a, He might be a, a travel consultant, but he could also be someone who's got experience as a financial consultant, revenue accounting, okay? And he's also done analytics, okay? Some of the other things, it's sales accounting, sales program. So he has some other areas that if he's interested in those areas or open to opportunities, I would sure put them in, in his headline there on his profile. Yeah. You wanna call my profile up for just a second? I just wanna point out one little quickie thing. For those people who don't have a, a banner or something up in their headline or you know up above them, I really sort of encourage you to come up with something because uh, you can see I came up with just a word cloud. I put a copy of my book on it, but over on the left-hand side there, you see I've got my name, my phone number and email address so that even if you look at my public profile and you don't see my information's in my contact information, it's in my about us section, but I wanna make it so easy. If anybody sees my profile, there is the information. So, you know, as you're working on your, uh, profile and if you're coming up with you know the doc, uh, some kind of picture to put in there think about putting your information up there and make it easy for everybody and your activity your activity level on LinkedIn is one of the factors that adds points when the algorithm runs on a search again the activity level what you've done on LinkedIn have you searched for jobs that's one of the reasons that I don't show up in the recruiters anymore when you get down to about the 10th or 12th page because I haven't been active as a recruiter for about five, well, it's 
nine years now. Right. Now again, that's some of the things that by changing things on your profile, seeing what you get, seeing what kind of results you do. Do a people search for yourself. As I put in, when I do a people search, I did recruiter. Right. Showed up. If I don't show up in those first 10 screens, I'm probably not a recruiter that they're going to consider. Right. Well, Locke, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, uh, for those of you who'd like to hear Locke talk for another hour, uh, <laughs> at three o'clock, he's going to be talking about jumpstarting your job search. Uh, you can go to the Career DFW calendar to find the link, or we will be on Facebook Live at three o'clock, so you can catch it there. Uh, so I just want to point that out. Uh, Locke will be doing this. This is part of the Frisco Career Transition Workshop. For those of you in the DFW area, you know that the Frisco CTW is probably the best one-day seminar you can put on. We were not, were not able to put it on on May 1st like we were planning. Uh, and so we've decided to go online and get the modules up there so everybody can, uh, you know, go so we can go through all the modules. So every week at three o'clock, we'll be putting on a different module. This week is jumpstarting your job search. Uh, tomorrow, interviewing Wednesdays. Tomorrow is session number eight, building rapport, establishing chemistry with the interviewer. So uh, if you haven't joined us for any of our resume seminars, please do that tomorrow. At, uh, please just do that tomorrow at one o'clock. Uh, everything will be on Facebook and on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're recording everything. On Tuesdays, we do LinkedIn. Every Wednesday, interviewing. Every Wednesday, Thursday is effective resumes. And on Fridays, the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meets. Uh, like I said, these sessions have been, will be recorded. This one is being recorded. Uh, it will be on the Facebook and YouTube channels. Uh, please check, follow, subscribe to both. Uh, for those of you who are on uh, Facebook, it may look something like this. Uh, if you go to our Facebook page, please be sure to click on the follow. When you do that, you'll get an automatic warning. Whenever we go live, you'll be able to see uh, the event and just uh, see what events are going live. Uh, if you find the video button there, you'll be able to click on videos and uh, it'll show all the videos. They are grouped by sessions. And this is the YouTube channel. Uh, if you click on playlist, you will see all the videos that we have recorded there. All the past interviewing sessions are there. The effective resume sessions are there. So if you've missed some of those, you can get caught up. So just as a reminder, Career DFW is a 501c3. We're a nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. All the speakers that you hear, uh, myself included, we are volunteers. We're just here to help you land your next great opportunity. So uh, we like to ask it when you do land your next opportunity uh, that you think about us and remember us so we can continue to help other people in the future. If uh, your company offers matching donations, please look up Career DFW and see if we're on the list. If so, please uh, you know check it so that uh, your, do your donation actually will double in value. If you don't see us on the list, please let me know and I will get our, uh, I will get the Career DFW name on your list, on the list so you can do that. So uh, thanks to everybody. Uh, Locke, thank you again. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you in about an hour. And uh, for everybody else, thank you for being with us today.